Uh, I want you to take your blessed seats so that we may share briefly what God has for us today. And as I share, I want you to be smiling. You can't be taking notes when you are gloomy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we have to enjoy church. One of the things which we need to understand is no one is forcing us to go to church, but we come to church because God has saved us, and we want to enjoy his presence. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because the scripture says, in his presence. What does it say? In his presence. Now, if there is fullness of joy, then you have to express that joy. Amen. That's why we have to enjoy church. We, know we are not coming to endure church, but we are coming to enjoy ourselves in the presence of God. Amen. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Now, I, I want to share to us something very important to begin sharing because I know I can't uh, do justice to it. And there is no hurry. Uh, somebody said there is no hurry in Africa. So there is no hurry in the things of God uh, unless reaching out to those who are going to hell. But for us who are to sit down, we are to sit down and to be taught the word of God so that we understand what God has for us. Amen. So I want to begin on something concerning understanding our purpose as a church. Understanding our purpose as a church. And as a church, we are learning that when we come to church, we have to carry a notebook and we have to carry a pen. And we need also to be carrying our Bibles because it's very important. Amen. Yeah, technology comes, but it doesn't have to replace what God needs us to be doing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Am I still in church? Okay. So understanding our purpose as a church and a few things for us to begin with understanding <clears throat> is that God serves us as individuals but he brings us into a family, into his family, into a church or his family. So it's very important for us to understand this, that yes, you are saved as an individual, but God, like, like I was thinking just this week, that I don't think God could have sent Christ if I was only the only one on earth to die for me. I know we have preached the gospel to sinners, and told them that God could have sent Jesus Christ to come and die for you, even if you were alone on earth. But I, to me, I'm beginning to look at it, no. God wants a family. From the beginning of everything, when he made Adam, he could have left him like that. But he said, this guy, it's not good for him to be alone like this. Then after bringing to him Eve, he commanded them to multiply. He commanded them to fill the earth. He commanded them to be fruitful. Why was he doing so? Because he wanted a godly seed throughout the world, throughout his earth that he has created. He doesn't want us to be few, but he wants us to increase and continue on increasing. That's why we are saying that God could have saved you years and left you somewhere on your own on the other side. But he saved you and brought you into his family. Praise the Lord. Let's look at a few scriptures. We will be looking at uh, very many scriptures. And we are beginning with 2 Corinthians 5.17. The scripture that we always know. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. The scripture says, If any man, therefore if any man, beginning with singular, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature or creation. The old has gone, behold, the new has come. Praise the Lord. So it begins to tell us that when we are in Christ, the moment we accept Christ, he does work removing the old and now he makes us 
to be new. That's why we say, I am born again. I am born again. I am a new creation in Christ. Now, when you become a new creation in Christ, he doesn't just now leave you a new creation there like that. But now he brings you somewhere. John uh, chapter 1, verses 12. John 1, 12. I want us to walk together so that we understand something. John 1, 12. This is what the scripture says. That, but as many, it's bringing the plurality of now everything. But as many as received him, to him. Does the Bible say to him? What does it say? To them. He did what? He gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So as God has saved us individually, then he brings us together so that we may be called his sons. His sons. His family. Now, when you look at many scriptures that talk about salvation, they are talking about he saved us. It doesn't say he saved you as an individual, but he saved us. He has made us acceptable or accepted in the beloved. It's talking concerning the plurality, meaning the family. The address is about the family of God. The people of God who are born again. Ephesians 2.5. Maybe we look at that scripture. Ephesians 2.5. This is what the scripture says. Even when we were dead in our sins, speaking concerning us, in plural, had he quickened us or given us life together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. That is plurality. It's not speaking concerning singular. Ye are saved, according to that uh, King James fashion. So, we as a people, God has saved us and brought us to be his family. Praise the Lord. Understand that. Then the second thing which you need to understand is, as a church, we are God's building. As a church, we are God's building. Amen. Now, as individuals, the scripture tells us that we are living stones. We will look at that. But as a church, we are God's building. Now, a building is not made up of one only thing. A building consists of now many things. Picture a house where you stay or picture our cathedral down there as a building. Now, what happens is we have the foundation, then we have the ground, or we have the stones that are laid, each stone next to another, held by the mortar or this, whatsoever you call it. Then we have now the roofing part, consisting of also many things as a building. So we need to understand that when, we, when I am an individual, I am not a building. But when I join up together with other believers, other saints, we become the building of Christ. We are the building of Christ as a church. Praise the Lord. A few scriptures there. Ephesians 2, verses 19 to 22. Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. So that we understand a few things there. This is what the scripture says in Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. It says, if you can read with me, we can read together. It says, now therefore ye are no more what? Strangers and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens with the saints. And what? The household of God. We are a household of God. A dwelling place of God. Praise the Lord. Very important. Then verses 20, uh, it says what? And 
are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, verses 21, it says, in whom Now, this, this is a growing building. It's not a static building, but it's a growing building, according to that scripture. We are God's household, but we are growing building. And the center of focus is Jesus Christ. He is the one that is holding us. He is the motor that is holding each one of us together. Binding us together, Jesus Christ. So when you look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, the one who is in between you and that neighbor is Jesus Christ. He's holding us together as a building. We continue with that scripture, verses 22. It says like, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 2, verses 22. It says, in whom you also are built together. That's what God is doing. Building us together. Not as an individual, but together. As the habitation of God. As the dwelling place of God. So tell your neighbor this, allow to be built. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a stone that wants to remain alone. Be a stone that desires to be built in the network of other stones. First Peter 2 5. First Peter 2 5. This is what the scripture says in First Peter 2 5. Amen. What does it say? It says, yeah, it, it's like it's pointing a finger to us. Okay? To every one of us. The scripture is pointing a finger to each one of us. And it says what? You also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we also, we need to allow ourselves to be built up because God is in the business of building a spiritual house for himself. Amen? Now, your neighbor may look very carnal, but they are spiritual. They are spiritual stones. Amen? Yeah, they may not pray as you pray or dance as you dance. Yeah. Yani, they are not embraced by some of the things which we are accustomed as a church. I wanted to say as religious people, but as a church to do. They are not accustomed. Even if the worship leader says everyone kneel and some worship leaders who have commanding voices, they command now everyone kneel down. In the presence of a holy God. They, they will just look at the worship leader. But as long as they are saved. They are spiritual stones. And God wants to lay them. Maybe beside you. You may not like them. But he wants to lay beside you. Yeah. You, you know, in the construction it is the masonry that understands how he will use that stone and the other stone. The other stone may look ugly, but he knows how to work with it to fit in the building, in the structure. So you may look at your neighbor, you think this is an uncultured person. But as long as they are believers... God wants to build them. Maybe they may be the next stone next to you. Praise the Lord. 
very important things. So allow God to build you. Allow God to connect you with others. Now, my major focus today is understanding our purpose as a church. But allow me to go to this number two, number three thing, which as a church, we are body, the body of Christ as a church. And I want to dwell there so that we understand a few things. As a church, we are the body of Christ. Now, you as an individual, you are not a body as far as the church is concerned. But when we are like this, we are the body of Christ. A local body of Christ. Then we have the universal body of Christ. So we are the body of Christ. And each one of us, the scripture says, individual members. Praise the Lord. First uh, Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians 12. From verses 12, this is what the scripture says. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Amen? For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I, I will want to preach with some people now here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me call my brother here. Can you clap for him? Amen. <laughs> now, this man of God, this is his body. Now, in this body, or oh, this body is made up of very many members. Very members, the seen and the unseen. Now, we will, let's dwell on what we see. Amen? We have the hand, but the hand is made up of also very many members. Fingers. Oh, oh you, you had put down the hand. Fingers. You can see the fingers. You can see the palm, the wrist, going down the elbow to the shoulder. Just a hand. We haven't touched on the tissues, the skin, the nails. We haven't touched on them. So the scripture is telling us that though the body is one, but that body has many members, and those many members are one body. This finger is not saying, I'm the one who is, if you know his name, I'm the one who is his name. No, no, no. This finger is not saying now, or I don't know which one is bigger to him, but the one that is bigger there is not claiming that I am the one. No, 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 no. The many members, but they are one. One body. Many members, one body. I'll be calling you soon. Yeah. Many members, but one body. Very important. We are many, and we need to be many because we said we are growing, building. A growing body. Many, but we are one. Very important. Many, but we are one. Unity. Unity is very important. Praise the Lord. Let's continue with that scripture so that we get something else. We just, which the Bible is saying, verses uh, 13. The Bible says, for by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be lawyers, we be Luos, we be Kikuyus, we be Kambas, we be Kalenchins, we be Turkanas. It doesn't matter. We are all baptized into one spirit. 
whether we are free or bond, we have been made to drink in one spirit. Now, I, I will not go into this explaining that because it speaks a lot. It speaks a lot. Being baptized in one spirit. So we need to be filled with the same spirit. If we have the same spirit, things, whatsoever comes out of us is one. Whatsoever we do is one. It's one spirit and we need it. Now, verses 14, uh, it says, For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Just explaining what we are saying. Okay? Verse 15 now, it begins to zero in. It says, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is sit therefore not of the body. And that is, now it brings me to, begin now to zero in on a few things. So as to get. What happens is God desires as his body to be one. Tell your neighbor we need to be one. We need to be united. Now your neighbor is not understanding you because the world has taught us to fight one another, to compete with one another. The world has taught us to live as individuals, not to live together. But Christ doesn't want that. When you go to his prayer in John 17, he prays concerning us being one. Coming together to that unity, being one. He wants us to be one. Because we are his body. But when we are divided, then it's like the foot is saying, I don't belong to that body. The hand is saying, I don't belong to that body. The eyes are saying, I don't belong to that body. So the enemy wants that separation to be there. Now, a body, you know, a body moves. <laughs> a body moves. This body of this man of God, when he is moving, he hasn't left his hand here or his foot there. He's just moving the whole of him. Moving together. Moving together. In other words, God wants us to be moving together. Tell your neighbor we need to move together. We need to move together. So, if there is a call for prayer, we have to go and pray together. If it's a call of worship, we have to worship together. If a, there is a call, a communal call, then we have to do things together. Not the hand, I may be the hand and I say I don't belong to the body. That belongs to someone else. That is the intention of the devil. Because of what he knows, if these people are united, the way the scripture says, I tell you, if two of you, Christ emphasizing, I tell you, if two of you shall agree as of touching anything on earth, it shall be done by your Father in heaven. So the enemy knows if we agree, things work. Things are done. So he does what? He separates. You go do your things. Do your things. So, he leaves me or I leave him to pray alone. I leave him alone to go to the Bible study. I leave him to do things alone. I exempt myself from being part of the body. And therefore, when the one who is to build is coming to build, he looks, he says, there are no stones. For him to join together.
So the scripture is telling us. The hand cannot say, I am not part of the body. Tell your neighbor, don't ever say you are not part of the body. Tell them I need you. Tell them you need me. Now, that speaks of connectiveness. Our connectivity with one another. It speaks concerning how to learn to build our relationships with one another as a family. Because when you look at the system of the body, it is united. There is a relationship between each other. Amen? If I want to lift my hand, there is a whole coordination from the brain to the nervous system, coordinating to the bones and everything. So a command already is issued and the hand coordinates to go up. The system, the whole system coordinating. Praise the Lord. The hand cannot go up on its own. There has to be. <laughs> it receives a command from somewhere. Then now it acts on. There is the reflexes. The everything is working together. So ask your neighbor, where do you get your commands? Because there is another area. Because I don't see you in Bible studies. I don't see you where the builder is building us. I'm not seeing you. So where are you receiving your commands? Yeah. A paralyzed person, you will find out that that person, part of their body doesn't respond to the commands from the head. So ask your neighbor, I know you are not paralyzed. So are you part of this body? Hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, just a few things. You can read that up to verses 27, but I'm not going to look at it like that. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. My major focus is verse 17, but I want us to begin from verse 14. 1 Corinthians 10. The Bible says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Speaking concerning just a few things or some things that make us not to be part of the body. Then he says in verses 15, I speak as to wise men. Look at your neighbor, say, I know you are wise. Yeah, you are getting what God is saying to us because I know you are wise. Amen? So, Paul is saying, I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. In other words, get what I'm saying. Amen? Now, verse 16, he says, The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Now, verse 17 is where we want to, to see why he is saying so. He says, for we being many. Now, you can touch your neighbor as we read that scripture. Amen. He says, for we being many are one bread. <laughs> Amen. Now, that scripture, you can preach it the whole year. For we being many are one bread. Amen? And one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Now, when we take communion, this is what happens. When we have the communion, that's what happens. We being many are one bread. Amen. Now, my friends here, they brought us some bread. <laughs> Amen. Now, 
these are two breads, but they, have, they, they are different. Amen? Very much different. Let me call Pastor John to come here. Open, open, open it. <laughs> now, and I want you to I want to show you something very important so that you get what the world is thinking or what is making us. My hands are okay. So don't worry. Now, this bread, how many remember we used to have these breads? Amen? And they were real breads. <laughs> Very real breads. Now, Let him also open that so that we get to what actually the scripture is telling us there. Now, this other bread is what the devil wants us to be. He has to be careful or I have to be careful even when I'm carrying it. So, the devil wants us to be like this. We can't hold together. We can't move together. We can't do things together. Because, just some Soviet, some Soviet here. Just lay them here so that, yes. So that we get it. Amen? Now, in this bread, the devil wants us to be like this. You know, it's everyone for himself. Everyone for himself. No longer one. We have a semblance of being one, but everyone, yes, cut it. If, if I throw, can I throw? If I throw that, you will find it scatters. If the thing that was holding it is torn, you will find everything falls apart. It scatters. That's what the devil wants. But this other bread, it doesn't matter. If it falls down, you will just pick it. It is intact. One body. Give us that scripture even as we look at it. Yeah. One body. One body. One bread. For we being many are one bread and one body. Praise the Lord. We are many but we are one. This bread, it moves as a whole. It doesn't leave particles. It moves as a whole. So God wants us to understand that. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I said I'm just beginning on something which I cannot finish. Now, is there somebody who wants bread? Please see us after the service. There are two breads here. <laughs> now, I, I, I want to give us a few things, just a few things. A few things concerning our purpose as a church. Number one, one of the things which you and I ought to be doing is, number one, to love the Lord with all our hearts. Loving the Lord with all of our hearts. Now that purpose is, in other words, called worship. 
Loving the Lord with all of our hearts. Worship together. Loving the Lord with all of our hearts. Praise the Lord. That is the purpose number one, which is worship. The church, as a church, we exist to honor and worship God. And we express our love to God by worshiping Him. Now, I want you to understand this, brethren, that worship comes before service. Worship comes before service. I pray that even us who are church workers in the church, we will understand this. Because some of the time, or most of the time, the enemy draws us away from the communal worship. So we begin to be busy, yes, in the church environment, but we are not worshipers. We are busy doing our own stuff. That is the intent of Satan, not God. And Satan thrives on ignorance. So if we are ignorance of our purpose, that I am going to church, communal gathering of the saints to worship. I want to worship God. I will serve as I worship God. Because my number one thing is worship. Praise the Lord. Worship. Very important. So we shouldn't worship out of duty. But we should worship because we want to. We should enjoy expressing our love to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, sometime maybe in the future, we will learn on the languages in worship so that we develop the vocabulary of worship. Because I realize sometimes my neighbor is silent. I'm not talking about you, but my neighbor is silent when we are worshiping. Even when the worship leader says, come on, just love the Lord, lift him. Bless him. My neighbor is silent. Maybe they are saying I'm doing it in the heart. But we are, you know, in the communal worship is different from your personal worship. Okay? What else feel it? In communal worship, you know, I can't say I'm dancing from the inside. No, 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 no. no. What is that? <laughs> I'm dancing from my heart. Oh, the worship leader, we are bowing down. Then I'm saying I'm doing it from my heart. And I'm just standing like this. No, no, no. It doesn't happen like that. If there is right coordination, then I need to be bowing. Yeah. Amen? Very important. So number one purpose is that. Number two purpose. I'm just highlighting number two purpose for us to understand is to love our neighbors as ourselves. Now, that talks of ministry. Loving our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Loving our neighbors as ourselves. Ministry. Now, we as a church, we exist to minister to people. And ministry is demonstrating God's love to others by meeting their needs. Praise the Lord. That's why we say if there is a need of someone for bread, there is bread here. Amen? Yeah. Ministering to the needs of the people. Ministry. Now, ministry is not just doing ushering. Ushering is just a small thing. Ministry might not be preaching. That is just a small thing. You know, as a body, I know you took a shower in the morning. Praise the Lord. Brothers, when I say Sifiwe, Mara nyingi wana tulemea, wana sema sisi, tunaoka mara moja. Lakini tunajua tunaoka kila siku. 
mara mbili asubuhi na jioni now what happens is this when you are taking the shower apart from ladies because they have to cover their hair but now if we use this man amen pastor john when he is taking a shower do you think there was any part of his body that he left out huh he washed every part of his body amen so what am i telling us thank you pastor john what am i telling us in this that ministry our ministry is beyond here ministering to one another i know in church like as the church will end everyone for himself everyone for himself i don't know where you will go but in a few minutes time once we say the grace even even if i wanted to see you 5 minutes after i may not see you we are ever rushing so you don't understand what richard is going through i don't understand what you're going through we don't understand each other but suppose we knew that we need to minister to one another we have now received the word we can now even say oh how was the word yeah how was the word then we became there then we fellowship then we say uh, i am going through this can you pray with me but the enemy doesn't want that he wants after communal fellowship everyone is on your max yeah so we don't minister to one another and you see as we have sat in the church you are sitting you are looking at yeah, the back side of the person next to you so even like in our church maybe a few of us are the ones who say turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor but most preachers they may not say so so you don't know even the neighbor you sit with the person next to you like that so after church you're going tell your neighbor from today i'm purposing to know five people in every service i attend clap for yourself <laughs> no even where someone stays do you know where even i stay yeah we know at least where someone stays in the church amen yeah usikuwe tu kama mwenye unaponyokanga tu ah ah amen now purpose number 3 oh before we look at that ephesians 4:12 ephesians 4:12 this is what the scripture says in Ephesians 4:12 concerning us as saints it says what for the perfecting of the saints aha uh -huh. now the ministry which we are talking about is the one that edifies the body of Christ and that doesn't come from the pastors it comes from us who are members of the body Amen. Edifying one another. As we minister to one another, to the needs of one another. We edify one another. We build up one another. God uses us to build up one another. Amen. Okay, purpose number 3, go and make disciples. Tell your neighbor, go and make disciples. 
And that purpose is evangelism. Now, I would have loved to dwell there. But <laughs> let me just say a few things to us so that we understand. We exist as a church to communicate God's word. We are ambassadors for Christ. And our mission is to evangelize the world. It is every Christian's responsibility to share the good news wherever they go. It's our responsibility. Amen? Now, we are to tell the world of Christ's coming, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and his promise to return. Amen? We are to do it. That is not the work of some individuals in the church. But every one of us, we are to do it. Amen? That's why when you attend cell groups, one of the things which we want God to help us is to invite everyone around us. We invite them to our cell meetings. We say, ah, mi naishi hapa hivi na kuna ushirika utakuwa next. Kwangu. Karibu sana. Ama ni kupitie. Somebody whom even doesn't go to church. We invite them. Whether they come and they get saved there or not, let them conti let's continue inviting them. We invite people to church. I know we don't do it. But as members, we are learning. We need to do it. Amen? Let's invite people. Our neighbors are people. We say, ah, oh, come to church. Let's go to church. Our pastors are great people. Yeah. Do you know our bishop? He, the way he preaches. Say, ah, I don't know him. I have never had. Come and see. Come and see. God is moving. God is healing. God is blessing us. Amen. I'm away. How barikiwi? Huh? What else feel it? Tuna invite watu kwa church, tuna invite watu kwa Kristo. Amen? Yeah. Evangelism. Inatakana ikuwe part of us. Part of us. Amen. Okay. Purpose number four, because I need to be finishing, is baptizing them. Now we have reached out to people, then we baptize them. Amen. Now, Philip, you know, Philip, Philip wasn't among the apostles. He's just a guy who was chosen to serve bread in the church, early church, among those guys. But the guy was filled with the Holy Spirit, the way you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The guy heard the word and now the Ethiopian eunuch is just walking, reading the scriptures. And he explains to him. And the guy sees water. And he says, what can hinder me from being baptized? He didn't say, wait a minute, I go and call Pastor Peter. Wait a minute, I go and call Pastor John. <laughs> no, no, no. He stepped into the water and baptized this guy. Tell your neighbor you can baptize people. But you have to reach out to them first. <laughs> yeah. So, the purpose which we are looking it, uh, at, number four, is fellowship. Fellowship. Baptizing them. Fellowship. And there is a lot which we can talk because when we talk of baptism, it's actually, it's like bringing us into one fellowship. Into one fellowship. Amen? Yeah. Let me finish on number five. As a church, our purpose is to teach others to obey, and that speaks of discipleship. Amen? Discipleship. Teaching others to obey. 
Now, we need to understand this. This is us as a church. You and me as a church. We as a church. Amen? Discipling others. Discipling others. Teaching them to obey. Let's look at this scripture in Matthew 28. It's part of the commission that Christ commissioned us as a church. And he says in Matthew 28 verses 19 he says go therefore Matthew 28 19 it says go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Then he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Then verses 20, he says, teaching them to observe or to obey all things that I have commanded you. Amen? So what we are seeing here is we as believers in the church, we need to be a people who can teach others. We reach them, they get saved, then we begin to teach them, to disciple them. Amen? We bring them up. So I want you to ask yourself, according to these purposes which we are learning, which one do you need to improve on? You are asking yourself, I'm asking myself, which one do you need to improve on? Which one do you need to cultivate in your life or to strengthen in your life? Because we are members of one body. We are one bread. We need to move as one. Amen? Amen? We need to move as one, not divided, not disintegrated, but we move as one. And the scripture says like this, that if we love one another, we are together, then what happens is the world will know that we are indeed his disciples. They will know. But they will not know we are his disciples if we are divided like the other bread. Now, Psalms 133, as I finish off and we pray. Psalms 133, this is what the scripture says. How good, behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren when brethren dwell together in unity. It is not speaking concerning just members of one household. It is speaking concerning us as the body of Christ. When we dwell together in unity. Then it begins to calm down. It's, a, it's like. It is like. Oil flowing from Aaron's head, running down his beards to the comments. Anointing flows where there is unity. Anointing flows when we as a church, we are moving together. Praise the Lord. When we move together, you will see great things happen. You may not know you are an evangelist or a prophet as long as you stay alone. But when we meet together and we are praying, you will find that there is a quickening of that prophetic grace in your life. And you begin now to speak. You begin, it's activated. The gifts of God are only activated when we are Moving as a body. When we are together as a body. Bwana Sifiwe. 
Yeah, I know I'm saying some serious stuff, but you want me to say in the accent of a Nigerian preacher for you to get it. <laughs> but I want you to understand that, brethren, you may not know the person you are sitting next to. They are great teachers of the word. You may not know because they are ever alone. But if God can allow you, you come together, we are together. We begin to pray together, to move together, to study together. You will understand, we will begin to understand the gifts that God has endowed you that are beneficial to the body. Now, verses 3 down there, it says, it's like the dew of Hammon, the refreshment. Refreshment it only happens when we are together. Amen? Wewe ukikaa peke yako, utaendelea kuboeka tu. Unaboeka tu, unaendelea kuboeka na kuisha. But when we are together, what happens is there is that refreshment that happens. So, desire not to be alone. Amen? Then, verses 4, it finishes off. By telling us that there God commands a blessing, even life forevermore. So when we are moving as one, we understand that I am part of the body. I am a member of this body. Then what happens is the life of Christ begins to flow. Amen. The life of Christ begins to flow. Some of the ailments which we ail, you will never see them. They can't because where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst. And therefore, no disease will stand amidst his people. Amen? We are supposed to be laying hands on the people who are not born again there. As they get saved, those who are sick, we cast out devils. We heal them. They receive miracles. But now we, because we are scattered, the enemy has scattered us. It is us who need more healing than the world that is sick. Tell your neighbor I'm changing. Amen. I want you to rise up on your feet. And I want you to pray, God, help me to move as a body. To move rightly in the body. In my purpose as part of the members of the body. Amen? Are you making that prayer? Amen? Just make that prayer. Tell him, Lord, help me. Areas where you find yourself, it's like you can't move with others. Let God help you to lay aside all those kind of things. Father God, we ask you to help us. Help each one of us in the name of Jesus. Areas where we are weak in moving in your purpose. In moving, oh God, in the purpose you have called us as a church, as the body of Christ. Help us, oh God Almighty. We lay aside Every spirit that disintegrates us, we lay aside every spirit of disunity, every spirit of offense, we lay it aside in the name of Jesus. Every, oh God, thing that keeps us, oh God, as individuals, so that we are not united as a body of Christ, to move in your purpose and to allow you move in our midst. Lord, we lay it off in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to hold the hand of your neighbor. Jesus Christ prayed and said, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. So we are telling him, Lord, make us one. As your son, Jesus Christ, prayed for us, make us one. Amen. And you will see great things happening. I want you to make that prayer. Just make it, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one in the name of Jesus. Make us one, Lord. We pray, Holy Father, make us one. 
as your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, prayed for us. Make us one in the name of Jesus. Let us move as your body. Let us do things as your body. Let us, oh God, pray as your body in the name of Jesus. Make us to be one in the name of Jesus. One in purpose, one in mind, one in vision, one, oh God, in the goal you have called us as a church. Make us one, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you're doing it. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.